Hello, hello, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I I decided for my 31 days of horror movie reviews that I a couple years ago, I forget exactly when, I watched for the first time Pet Cemetery and then the remake of Pet Cemetery that came out that same year. So I decided to watch the sequel that I don't think I really knew about until very recently. Pet Cemetery 2 is a 1992 film that was directed by Mary Lambert, and it stars Edward Furlong. That caught me by surprise big time, because this isn't Edward Furlong strung out on drugs, which is how he would later become i uh, know i'm talking about edward furlong like a year after terminator 2 prime edward furlong so that was kind of trippy to see that young john connor kid it, see him in a movie where at the very beginning his mother is an actress and it was kind of cool to see the mother on a movie set like they almost faked you out pretending like the beginning scene is the movie, but it's really the movie that they're making inside the movie. Eh? Eh? Kind of reminds me of Wes Craven's New Nightmare, even though that came later, so maybe he got the idea from this. Either way, the mother dies in a horrible, horrible accident. This is the first five minutes of the movie. She dies on set, and I figured... We would have Edward Furlong, like the plot of the movie would be that, oh, well, he's going to find out about the the pet cemetery, right? The place where you bury whoever and they come back. And he's going to do it to his mom because he misses his mom. It's mostly, no, mostly this movie is Edward Furlong's friend. This kid who his father, played by Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown is probably the best thing about this movie. He is. Not just Clancy Brown being a great actor and somebody who you enjoy watching just in general. And a young Clancy Brown to boot. But Clancy Brown is the one who is accidentally killed. And he's the one that gets buried and then brought back. And then acts like a complete shithead. And even though I enjoyed watching Clancy Brown, there was definitely moments of him eating up the scenery, and you can tell he was enjoying this role. I could have done without him raping his wife <laughs> like that. That happened, I kind of checked out of the movie just a little bit. I was like, okay, this is completely unnecessary. I was surprised by how much of the movie was Edward Furlong's friend. It was more like that kid, and... And since his father's Clancy Brown, it's a lot more dealing with that dynamic, more so than even Edward Furlong. It almost felt like Edward Furlong uh, just disappeared. <laughs> Maybe he had finals, and so he wasn't available to act in the majority of the movie. I don't know. It was such a weird thing. He comes back around, though. And this is where the movie kind of confused the fuck out of me. So Edward Furlong sees that not only does his friend's dog first come back from the dead after the dog gets shot and so they bury it and then the dog comes back and it's a fucking almost zombified dog, right? And then Edward Furlong sees Clancy Brown, the father, the sheriff of his friend come back and just not only just be a dick, but he's homicidal. At some point, Edward Furlong sees all of this and then decides, the third act, he decides to bring his mom back in this way. And I was confused as fuck. I thought, why would he think this is okay now? Why would he, after seeing everything, want to bring his mom back to potentially act like the way Clancy Brown is? And then you get a, a section of the movie where the mother does come back. And Edward Furlong is almost okay with it. He looks evil and he's smiling and he's like, yeah, we're going to go be an evil family together. Like, he's into it. But the father, this is a side plot with the father. I didn't even mention how there's a moment when the possessed dog 
makes the father dream about this girl and it's like a sex dream but then in the dream the girl turns into the dog and then the dog attacks him that was all very fucking weird but the father i guess convinces edward furlong to change his mind i don't know the third act i was lost i was completely lost i didn't get why he decided to do it and then i didn't get why he decided to change his mind and go against her confusing as fuck this movie had some decent moments this movie i think uh, clancy brown got me through it more so than anything else it was i shouldn't say more violent than what i was expecting because of the material because of the original movie and it's kind of par for the course i guess it's the one scene where clancy brown kills the bully kid i should mention the bully kid because it's not a stephen king based film if you don't have homicidal crazy bullies and i know like when i say uh, Stephen King film. It's not like he himself wrote this movie or it, he created the original film. And so it being a sequel, that makes it connected to Stephen King. And you have to have these bullies. It's so cliched by this point. It doesn't help that I've seen a hundred of them since this. And I'm going back and seeing this, this tired, tired cliche of the bullies that are doing things that where the fuck are adults? Where the fuck are people that allow this to happen? I'm not saying it doesn't ever happen in real life, but I just, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing it in movies. This film, though, despite the little enjoyment I got from Clancy Brown, I can't say it was good. I can't say I ultimately enjoyed it. I thought a lot of it just seemed like they gave up by the third act. The movie, not great. Ultimately, I'm going to say Pet Cemetery. No, 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 thank you. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of Pet Cemetery 2? Do you like it more than I do? Or do you agree that probably didn't need it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! So over the rush, sniff some more blow. Let the bitch bleed and I'm making a porno. I'ma keep it going a few times for I pass out. Wake up in the morning, realize I'm black. Yeah, yeah.